She'll come back. Okay. So, I got this started a little bit early, but it should be, everybody should be joining. Hey, Sneha, is Jazzy joining you? Uh, no. Okay. I think she has not <laughs> She what? Okay. All right. So before we get started, I just want to mention something. I think something that we had a difficulty with last time is that if you converse on your side with each other, which normally is fine, it, it's a lot of background noise and we can't hear each other. So if you if you want to have a conversation, which is absolutely fine, maybe mute yourself, like in the upper right hand corner, um, and that way it won't be background noise for the rest of us. Other than that, we should be fine. I'm hoping that there'll be at least one, two, three, four, five. We've got five computers going. At least three other people will hopefully be joining us soon. So. Um, let me take a look and see if anybody's. Uh, hey guys, how do you accept? How do you um, join? Do you just accept the invitation? Yeah. I think Marina is trying to uh, to join. <laughs> She's still not in. Um, hopefully she'll come in any second. Well, let's go ahead. Okay, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on hold for just a second. Oh, maybe I'm not putting you on hold. You know what? I'm just gonna. I think I'm just gonna go with this for right now, and hopefully. The power circle. All right. Let's just go ahead and, and start going. So, what questions do you guys have? All right. Let's type them. Type them into the chat thing. Tell me which it is, which which uh, worksheet or whatever it is. Six six on what, Austin? Like on the oh, on the practice. These are all on the practice test, or okay, six nine eight. Three. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, so I'm gonna share these, screen share these really quick. So we're looking at the um, practice test for all these, it looks like. Six, eight, nine, and then the free response. So uh, this one right here, number six, how many moles of solid barium nitrate? That's one, all right. So um, when you're doing this, this one's kind of tricky. So let's see. I'm going to I'm going to have to switch screens again to um, to get my bamboo tablet. Oh, hey Marina. Okay. Uh, 
There it is. All right, so can you guys see the bamboo tablet now? Yeah. Okay, so we're trying to do barium. That's pretty thick. I don't like how thick that is. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay. Barium nitrate, right? And we want to get one molar, right? And um, if I remember right, which I don't, uh, we have 300 milliliters, and the volume is not going to change. Okay. So if we have 300 milliliters, that's the same as the 0 0.3 liters, right? And to get one molar, we're going to need it to be 0 0.3 moles, right? Okay. On number six, you guys with me? You need 0 0.3 moles total of the nitrate, okay? So if we have iron nitrate, and it's Fe3, so it's FeNO3, three, that's going to produce one Fe3 plus plus three NO3 minuses. You guys follow that? Yeah. Okay. And if we have... Uh, 0 0.20 molar of this, right? So there's 0 0.20 moles of that. Or is it, wait, is it 0 0.20 molar or moles? Molar, okay. So 0 0.2, uh, okay, let me erase that. Okay. 0 0.20 molar. That means that we're going to end up with 0. 60 molar NO3 minus. So you with that? Okay. And so we're going to have 0 0.60 molar times, that's how, because that's how much nitrate we have. Oops. And we are going to Multiply it times 0 0.3 um, mole, uh, oh, 0 0.3 liters to give us the number of moles, and that's 0 0.180 moles. So, are you guys following that so far? Okay, so if we, we need to have a total of 0 0.3 moles. And we have 0 0.18 moles, then we will need a total of 0 0.12 moles added. That's how much more we need. Okay? And if barium nitrate, oh, up here, gives us 2 moles of nitrate, okay, that means that 0 0.12 moles of NO3 minus, and we do a bridge because bridges are our best friends. Um, for every two moles of NO3 minus, we have one mole of the BA NO3 minus. Or, no, there's no minus there. Ha ha. I was just kidding. Wait, isn't that BANO3C? Yes, that's what I'm changing it to. Oh, God. BANO3C2. So that's 0 0.12 divided by 2 gives you 0 0.06. So the answer is A. 0 0.06. Okay. Any any questions on number 6? Um, I just multiplied So, like, FANO3, it was 300 milliliters of a 0.2 molar. Right. Let's see, if you multiplied, you said you multiplied the 0.3 times the 0.02, or 0.3 times 0.2? Yeah. Um, 
No, that won't work every time because it depends on what substance you have. You had the BANO3 over here, BANO3 2, so it worked out there. Um, it was coincidence that you got that you were able to work it out that way. Okay. Go ahead and mention one name. Yes. Um, so wait, so we can keep multiplying it. So on this problem, the volume doesn't change. Right? The volume does not change. All right. Uh, any other questions on number six? No? Okay. Let's go to number eight. Um, does everyone have eight in front of them? Do I need to bring up eight for everyone to see? You got it? Okay. Because then I'm going to go to page two of here. So I've cleared out. So we're working on number eight. And so now we need to precipitate all the Cl minus out. Let's see. We have a one liter sample of 0.1 molar NaCl and 0.1 or 0.1 moles of NaCl and 0.1 moles of CaCl2, and how much AgNO3 do you need? Okay. Um, all right. So we have one liter, and we have uh, 0.1 moles of the NaCl and 0 0.1 moles of the CaCl2. And um, NaCl will give us one, well, I don't have to, one Na plus plus one Cl minus. So if you have 0 0.1 here, you know you're going to get 0 0.1 here, okay? Which means that the CaCl2 is going to give us one Ca, whoa, 2 plus plus 2 Cl minus. So 0 0.1 will give us 0 0.2. Um, so you guys see that? Which means that altogether we have 0 0.3 moles of the Cl minus. So then they want to know um, how much of the AgNO3. And when we have AgNO3, for when we, that dissociates, we get one mole of the Ag plus, and we get one of the NO3 minus. So what that means is if we have, oh, and, of course, Ag plus plus Cl minus gives us AgCl. So if we have 0 0.3 moles of the Cl minus, we only need 0 0.3 moles of the Ag plus, which, so if that's the case, that's 0 0.3 here, and that's a one-to-one -one ratio, so that's 0 0.3 here. So your answer is C. So that one is pretty simple, but it may have looked tricky. Because again, you're you've got three different substances in the problem. So, like, Mr. Warner, a problem like this, you should break up the, the every, everything that they give you. Right, right. Especially the ionic species when they when they're putting stuff in there. Now, the reason that you guys get to break it up is because you don't have to have the 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 solubility rules memorized. So they're telling you that hey, you're given the stuff. It's going to break up. You're going to get lots of ions from the cations and the anions, or however many you've got to figure out how many moles you get of each, and then add them up. And usually, you're ending up dividing by the the volume. Okay. Any other questions on number eight? No. Okay. Let's go to I believe number nine was the next question that I saw in there. Since we're still in multiple choice, and Oh, Ellery has a question. Um, okay, hold on. Let me go back to the. Let me go back, please, to the. Uh... Sorry, we were talking about it while you asked if there were questions. Oh, that's okay. All right. So, Ellery, what was your question? Why do the 0.3 moles of Ag on the AgCl equation equal to 0.3 moles on the AgNO3? Why are they because the, they're all one-to-one -one ratios. There is one Ag plus 
plus one CL minus gives you one mole of the AGCL. Okay? okay. So you know that however much AG, you know, however much CL minus in this case, it's since it's one to one, you need one CL minus to one AG plus. So if you have 0.3 moles of CL minus, you only need 0.3 moles of AG plus to precipitate it all out. Okay. okay. So if you only need 0.3 moles of the AG plus, well, how much AG NO3 do you need then? Well, for every mole of AG plus that's produced, it comes from one mole of the AG NO3. So that means that if you have 0.3 moles of the AG plus, you need exactly 0.3 moles of the AG NO3. Okay. 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 There's a lot of this crazy working backwards stuff, all those one-to-one -one ratios. Okay. Are you guys ready for number nine now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Number nine says a 40 milliliter sample of 0.25 molar KOH is added to 60 milliliters of 0.15 molar barium hydroxide. What is the molar concentration of OH minus in the resulting solution? Assume that the volumes are additive. Okay, so this is going to be important because we're going to add that 40 milliliters and that 60 milliliters. So we, we need to figure out the number of moles of each. All right. So let me uh, get a new page going here. So uh, 0 0.04 liters of the 0.25 KOH. So uh, 5 molar. And this is of the KOH. And so for every 1 mole of KOH, when it dissociates, we get the 1K plus and the 1OH minus. So when we multiply those together, we know we're going to get, so if, if we have 0.25 molar KOH, we have 0.25 molar OH minus. When we multiply those together, that gives us um, 0. Point, is it 0 0.10? 0 0.1. Oh, 0 0.1? 0 0.1 moles of the OH minus. Okay. Now, uh, the other one was the 60 milliliters of 0.15 molar BaOH2. Uh, I keep looking at it and then forgetting what it is. 60 milliliters of 0.15. 0 0.06 liters times 0 0.15 molar. Okay, on this side you have one Ba and it's, it's barium hydroxide. So when it dissociates, you're going to get one... Ba2 plus, and you're going to get two OH minuses, right? So if this is 0 0.15 molar, this is 0 0.30 molar. Are you guys, you guys tracking with that? Copacetic. Copacetic? Yeah. Right on. All right, so I can change this to 0 0.30 molar. Now, 0.3 times 0.06, is that 0 0.018? Yeah. All right, so that's, so that's how many moles of the OH minus we have. Okay, so now we're going to combine those. 0 0.01 moles and plus the 0 0.018 moles and we get zero oh man zero two eight moles of the OH minus and uh, and this is the thing that when Austin you asked that question before oh um, this is where you add up those volumes volumes are additive so we get 0 0.100 liters and when we divide those we get 0 0.28 molarity so the answer is C so any questions on number nine I suppose I should put the numbers up here so you guys know what we're working on 
No questions? Okay. Let's go on to free response 4C. That sounds like a fun one. Uh, oh, yes. This one's a doozy. Uh, let's see. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I need to rearrange my screen a little bit so that I can see this problem. Hey, Warner. Yeah. Can you actually, when you do see, or, oh, oh, JK, never mind, I got this. Am I? Okay. Okay, so let me go to, I'm going to turn the page to 4C here. All right, 4C. Now, what happened is you had an original sample that had um, calcium carbonate in it. And from that calcium carbonate, you ended up precipitating all of that calcium or it, it came out first as a CA2+, okay? And for every one mole of CaCO3, you get one mole of CA2+. And then it becomes calcium oxalate, calcium C2O4. And for every one mole of calcium 2+, you got one mole of calcium oxalate. And we'll start down here, calcium oxalate. And then that was dissolved and you ended up getting H2C2O4, which is oxalic acid. And for every one mole of calcium oxalate, it provided you one mole of the oxalic acid because this is one to one, right? So we had one to one coming down, calcium to one calcium to one calcium. And this calcium oxalate then went one oxalate to here, to oxalic acid. So if that's the case, once you calculate the molarity or the number of moles of this, you go backwards. Well, if we had one mole of the oxalic acid, or if you did that calculation, you got 9.724 times 10 to the negative third moles, and that's 9.74 times 10 to the negative third moles of calcium oxalate. And then that 9.724 times 10 to the negative third moles became 9.724 times 10 to the negative third moles of calcium 2 plus, which then became 9.724 times 10 to the negative third moles of oxalic acid. So it's one to one to one all the way back. So it's the same answer. Now, that's what you would write. You would just write that as your answer. But on the test, on the AP exam, you need to explain that. Like you don't get the point for having the same number of moles you get the point for explaining why it's the same number of moles. So you could, I mean, you could draw it out like this. That's fine. I would accept that. Well, because if it, it's because here there's only that you agree that there's only one mole of calcium in the calcium carbonate, right? Yes. And so when it dissociates, you're getting one mole of the calcium 2 plus, right? You would agree with that? Yes. And when it combines with the oxalate ion, you only have one calcium in that. So that's a one-to-one -one ratio, right? Yes. And then once you have that and it dissociates, you end up, let's say you did another step here. If it dissociates, you're only getting one C2O4 2 minus out of, out of this, right? Mm -hmm. And when it combines with hydrogen, it's going to, it's going to require two H pluses, but it's still only requiring one oxalate. Oh. Would it ever change? Would that, not, not in this reaction, no. No, but in, like, what would be an example of a reaction that would change? Well, if you had done, um, a good example would be, let's say that, um, Instead of like carbonates are two minus, but let's say you ended up doing uh, shoot everything I can think of right now is is a two minus. Oh, let's say it ended up being a phosphate. You had a PO four three minus. Well, now you're going to need three calciums and two phosphates, right? 
So then that ratio changes. And then once you get the, because then you come out of here and you've got two phosphates going to, you know, whatever, one phosphate in the, if you had phosphoric acid or something. I mean, it's, it, it's one of those where you'd have to track it back with that. Okay, good. So are there any questions on 4C? No? Okay. So are there, uh, oh, free response two and free response three. I see those. Okay. So let's go back to, let me look at those. Free response two and three. Okay. All right. So, free response number two. So, um, in this one, you're trying to find the molarity of the, the final amount of nitric acid. Again, we're talking about those volumes are additive. You're, you're putting them together. So, if in one of your solutions you have the... I wrote it wrong already. So, you have 0.05... Uh, liters, not milliliters, liters times the 0 0.1 molarity. When you multiply those together, you get 0 0.005 moles, okay, of the HNO3. So that's the first one. Then you have 0 0.1 liters times 0, oops, times 0 0.2 molar, and that's going to give you 0 0.02 moles. Yes? Are you doing number one or two? Oh, I'm so sorry. I am doing number one. Okay. Let's, and you're like, yeah, that's not number two. Let's try that again. Uh, all right, sorry. Number two. Oops. For your response. All right. Woohoo. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is you have to write the balanced equation. So you have calcium. It says it's a solid. Calcium metal reacts with water, H2O, and it produces calcium hydroxide. So calcium, you know that hydroxide is the OH minus. So it's, there's only one minus and the calcium is a 2 plus, so it's CaOH2, and it produces hydrogen gas. And you remember that because of Brinkelhoff, it's one of the seven diatomic elements, so you end up getting an H2 there. And then you need to balance it. My calciums are fine. My hydrogens, I need four and I need two oxygens. So if I just put a two right here, I have them all balanced. Okay. Now, um, you have 4.25 grams of the solid calcium. So, uh, 4.25 grams of calcium. And what I want to know is, of course, how many moles that is. So I do my bridge, my best friend, and I have 40.08 grams of calcium on the bottom, one mole of calcium on the top, and I end up with 0 0.106. And you'll notice that I'm not doing all the sig fig things until the very end. just makes it easier. Moles of calcium uh, and that's the uh, oh just of the straight calcium not the ions okay and then because of that bridge I want oh I could have just done the whole bridge huh yeah why don't I just show the whole bridge instead I'm sorry I shouldn't have broken it up like that and for every one mole of calcium I get one mole, according to the balanced equation up here, it's one and one, one mole of the calcium hydroxide. And so once I multiply that all out, 0 0.1060 moles of the calcium hydroxide. And 
then um, it wants to know, I forget the exact equation again already, or the question. It wants to know what is the molarity of the hydroxide ions? So this was the tricky part. You had to read the whole question, which I didn't do the very first time I worked out this problem. It wants to know what the concentration is of the OH minus. Okay, so we have this many moles of calcium hydroxide, except for that, um, that's not the number of moles of hydroxide, that's just the calcium hydroxide. So I'm gonna run that through, I should have given myself more room on the bridge. For every one mole of the calcium hydroxide, Never mind. That's not. I'm not going to be able to fit it in. Okay. So, uh, for every one mole of, um, I'm trying to think of an easy way to write it since I finished my bridge off, but I can't. So let's start right here. Zero point one zero six zero moles of Calcium hydroxide. Okay, so one mole of calcium hydroxide gives us two moles of hydroxide. So I'm going to multiply that times two. How do you know you have two moles of the hydroxide? Because if I dissociate calcium hydroxide, I get one mole of the calcium two plus plus the balanced equation has two of the OH minus so one here gives me two there and so um, what is that uh, 0 0.2 uh, 1 2 I should just plug in my calculator huh Yes, two, two, one, two, zero moles of the hydroxide. And it doesn't want the moles, it wants the molarity, it wants the concentration. So now I have to divide it by the volume, which is the 0 0.225 liters. And as an answer, with correct sig figs of just three sig figs, that gives us uh, zero, oh, Things acting up. Oh, don't do that to me. <gasps> Did it disappear for everybody? Yeah, we can see you. Yo, you can see me? Yeah. 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 You were the one that asked about two, and we actually understand it now, so if that, like, if it helps you, then. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys are like, this is really tedious. Quit talking. All right, here we go. Um, okay, good. Oh, okay. Mr. Warner, I have a question. Okay, go, or uh, wait, I was going to do three. No, we, we asked about three, but then we figured it out. Oh, you figured it out? Okay. All right, what's the next question? Um, I just want to know, I don't really understand how to get a, a combined oxidation slash reduction equation, how you can attach to, like, a base media. If it's a basic media? Yeah, so, like, I know how to combine everything. <laughs> okay. Um, let's do this then. You're really just adding OH minuses to both sides. So let's take a look at the test. Uh, that's number four. four. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that down. I'm just walking through it real quick. So if we have... All right. Two... MnO4 minus plus 5. Oh, I did it again. So sorry. I'm pressing a button on my, my pen and it messes me up. All right.
Is somebody singing? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Priscilla. Yes. All you have to do is add OH minus to both sides, and you have to add enough OH minus to cancel out the H pluses. So then you end up with the two, or I'll just write it all out. Wait, is that supposed to be the balanced equation for form A? Yes. Clearly, I didn't give myself enough room. And then, once you've done this, oh, sorry, that's a mine. Did it again. Okay, the eight H two here goes away. So then you subtract eight from both sides, so that leaves you with eight on this side. Okay. Yep, that's it. So you just add the OHs to the side with the eight plus. That's all. Okay, so you don't so you don't add the OHs to both sides. Yeah, you do. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. See, when you end up, then so then you had the, the H pluses on the left side, and now you don't. You've got the waters on the left side, and you have the OHs on the right side. So you can see, oh. let me change the color, a little bit easier. Okay. You had the H, 16 H pluses on the left, and now you have 16 OH minuses on the right. You had 8 H2Os on the right, and now you have 8 H2Os on the left. Okay. All you're doing is just swapping them and turning the H's into OH minus. Okay. If we do that, will we get credit? Yeah. They very rarely do they make it base media. Yeah, of course. Okay. Say that again. Is this number four? That was number four, except for that switching it to a basic media was not a part of number four. That was just a general question about redox in a base media. Okay. Well, on number four, like when you do the oxidation and reduction equations, yes. how do you take out the H and the H2, C2 before when you make it an oxygen? Okay. The, um, let me go back to it. Uh, the reason that you take, you're talking about, uh, you're w wait, you're talking about why you take the H2 out of the C2O4? Julia? Yeah. You're talking about why you went from H2, C2O4 to just C2O4? Yeah. Because this is, um, this is a polyatomic ion. This is the oxalate ion. It's a polyatomic, so it's ionic. So when you would write out your, your total ionic equation, you'd have H plus plus C2O4 2 minus, and then you notice that the C2O4 2 minus is the one that changes to the CO2, because the carbon here changes from a, what is it, a, a plus 3? To a plus 4. To a plus 4. Okay. So that was all, that's why you, so, so again, this is, I'm, I was almost positive this is one of the polyatomic ions you had to, oops, memorize. Oxalate. And so that's part of the remembering. So, but I will say this, the, the complicated, um, the complicated redox reactions that are going to appear on like my test and if you end up doing the retake and if they put it in the AP exam this year. Those ones are always the 
MnO4 minus, the Cr2O7 two minus, and the C2O4 two minus. Those are the ones that the ones that usually are used um, in that problem. And then you're combining with something like an Fe, like an Fe2 plus or an Fe3 plus. You're combining sometimes with um, I don't know H2S, sometimes with uh, H2O2, things like that. Yeah, how come we can't be more like AP Psych? How come what? I don't even know what AP Psych is like. Like at AP Psych, we can do open note, open book, partners. For your exams? Yeah. Wow. But that's not very much like the actual AP exam. Yeah, totally. That's what I was thinking. Okay. If we overpower the Nice. Very funny. All right. Um, do you want to see another problem? Did you guys, uh, you guys got two? Okay, so one, two, and three are done. Four is done pretty much. Anything on the multiple choice? Or do you guys want to ask a question about any of the other worksheets? Uh, Priscilla is mad and she wants to ask you a question, so... All right, and Julia, you guys type the questions in. Type the questions into the... Julia. Is what? Well, for, for balancing, for balancing the equation, yes, you could use half moles. And especially because, do you guys notice that it... Um, on number 10, it said that uh, it was one mole of the acetic acid, the CH3 or uh, ethanoic acid, whatever, the CH3, CH2, COOH. There is one mole of that, so you had to have half moles because it was you're starting with one mole. You can't change the number of, of acetic acid molecules you have. So what I'm not going to have are half, the oxidation numbers are not going to be halves. Okay, so oxidation numbers won't be halves, but balancing equations can be halves. Okay. Do you understand the difference, Julia? Yeah. Wait, will you expect that on this test? Half to do to balance with a half mole. I yeah. I don't believe I have that on this test. I'm pretty sure I don't. Um, but um, you should you should be ready for it any time. All right, Ellery, I'll answer our question, and then Marina has a question on 5S number 3C. We'll do that. Okay, Ellery, go ahead. Um, when are we using about the um, There's going to be a question on there. basically... Wait, say that again. Is there a, qu a question about what? Um, the questions with the, like, when we learn about the ionic equation, the questions for that, is it literally just, Finding the balance of that ionic equation? Um, usually it's finding the, it's, uh, you're just finding the balanced part. Um, you're not, the net ionic, you're not having to do so much of the net ionic equations. Like you don't have to predict the products very frequently. Most of, most of the problems I'm going to give you for right now are, you will not have to predict products. You might, it, you might be given all in words what the reactants are and what the products are. And then you have to make the formula and then balance it and then do the or do the the, the redox reaction to to get and, and it'll say something like that if you have to do the redox. So Ellery and Austin, your screen fro are is frozen. Are you guys still there? Oh there you are. Okay. Alright. So I'm gonna go to 5S. I'm gonna go to 5S 3C. Uh, let me just make sure that I've got that. So 5S3C is, oh, it's a predict one. Of course it is. Um, AgNO3 plus NaBr. 
Okay. Let me screen share. Or no, I'll just go back to my, my screen again. Okay. Let's go ahead and create another one. All right. And this this action will this could be a this could be a realistic question on a test. A G N O three plus um, N A B R. And what will that what will you end up getting out of that? So you know that it's a double replacement, right? Or a double displacement, depending on how you phrase it. So you know that you're gonna have A G B R. They're just switching partners, and you're going to have NaNO3, all right? Now, the piece of this that, that, that College Word will expect is I'll say, okay, students need to remember that nitrates are always soluble, and the alkali metals are always soluble. Okay, so if that's the case, then when we're writing the big total ionic equation, we're going to have Ag plus plus NO3 minus plus Na plus plus Br minus, and those are all ionic, and they're going to separate because they're soluble, because Na and NO3 are both soluble. And on the other side, what that leaves you with is if they, they're going to tell you, okay, it's a precipitation reaction. So which is the precipitate? Which forms the solid? Well, if you know the Na and the NO3 are both soluble, then that means that together they are definitely not going to make something. So that means that the only other choice is AGBR. And that's going to form your solid. Plus, and then you're going to have... Na plus plus NO3 minus. Now this is the total ionic. Total ionic. And if it's total ionic, total ionic, you're going to include all the ions. Now you want to cancel out the ones that are the same on both sides. So the NO3 is the same on both sides. And the Na plus is the same on both sides. Leaving you with, as a final equation, Ag plus plus Br minus yields AgBr. And it's not going to ask you for state symbols, but if it, if it was asking you any question about that, you would have aqueous, because it's in water, it's soluble in water. So these are both aqueous. And then you would, so Aq, Aq on both the Ag and the Br and then S for solid on the AGBR together. Thank you. You are welcome. So what about A when like sulfates are soluble and you said alkali earth metals are soluble? Right. So well, I'll have to admit, the A question, um, well, you might be able to get it out of that one. Let me let me write that one out and see if I can do that one. All right. So you have CuSO4 plus Na2CO3. Oh, that's awful. Okay, but you guys will get it. Okay, and it's going to yield when you do the you do the double displacement. You're going to end up with Na2SO4 plus CuCO3. Now, we just finished saying that the, that the sodium was the soluble one. Which And by the way, if they give this to you as a precipitation reaction, that means that the reactants are both soluble. They wouldn't give you one to do a precipitation where one of them was a solid. Okay, So that means that when you write it out, the total ionic, I'm going to write Ti here. Oh, and this is the net ionic. So the total ionic is going to be Cu2 plus plus SO4 to minus plus, um, it doesn't really matter, but you could write 2Na plus plus 
CO3 to minus is going to give you, now you know that this is soluble, so this one has to be broken up into its ionic. Oh, you could write two Na plus plus um, SO4 to minus, and that means that the only one that's left that could be a solid is the CuCO3. Okay, so that's going to be solid. So then the sodiums are the same on both sides, and the SO4 two minuses are the same on both sides, leaving you with Cu2 plus aqueous plus CO3 two minus aqueous yields Cu, CO3, and that's a solid. Okay. Oh, all right. Oh, I'm missing. Okay, so are we going to get the, the solubility rules in the test? Um, you're not going to need them. I mean, I can give you the solubility rules in the test, but um, you don't really need them. We'll see what happens. I, I'm almost positive I don't ask you solubility questions on this test. Um, why? Well, because it's it's been a major, it's you know, AP's taken it out, and so I don't want to spend time trying to figure out ways to test you on it that it's going to be wrong. Honestly, that's good. Okay, um, and then, oh, Julia, you had the question about 5A, so I, I covered that. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. how different is the actual test from the practice one? Not very much, Sneha. Okay. It's pretty similar. Shannon, I'm not sure what that means. Do you have a question, Shannon? Brandon did that, and it was because he wants to know the same thing. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> they were. What was the answer to my question? I just did it. Five, like, oh, are there any questions on the test? No, I was going to say on 5A that, that I'm not going to do solubility. That was what Austin's was why, and we're not going to do that because I don't, I don't know how, I don't know what to what extent College Board wants you to know solubility stuff. I think it's kind of silly that they're saying don't memorize the rules except for these three. I don't know what, what that means exactly. So I can't think of a good question and I don't want to waste your time. The Say again. When's the retake? Oh, the retake. Um, usually I try to make it a week after I hand back the test. So if your test is on Friday, I hand it back on Tuesday. So a week from Tuesday, what, and I'd prefer to do it on a day that we have class. So in the morning on, I doubt that the morning of Tuesday would be a um, uh, blue day, so probably the morning of that Wednesday, whatever date that is. I'm guessing that's when it'll be. Yeah, right. Oh, but probably not Wednesday because, of course, that's ASB. So... I'd rather do it at lunch. You'd rather do it at lunch? Well, it depends on what the plus period is that day. What? We'll figure something out. Hey, next time you do the test, can you please like not do it on the same day as AP Calc and AP US? Yeah. Okay. Well, do you know when the next? Do you guys know when the next AP US AP Calc test is? Yeah, because I have three tomorrow, man, and I'm not to be here. Wait, you have, you have three tests tomorrow, AP Calc, AP US again? And AP Chem. Yeah. And AP Chem. Okay, so. They do on purpose. No, we t we emailed each other and said, "Is there some way we can do it?" But the hard part was like trying to. I don't know. I, if 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 we start moving it around, which I understand, but we're like changing our curriculum, it's difficult to stagger it. It's difficult to make it all happen for us to, to stand top. We're gonna try. It would be nice, but you know, I mean when you get into college and you have finals exam, they're all on the same day. Sometimes. Yeah, they're, all, uh, they're, they're like in sequential order. In sequential order? Like you have it like one Monday, one two, you know what? It depends. Like, it depends on your schedule. I've had three final exams in one day. Yeah. What? Okay. High school. All right. Lucky uh, you. Some of us the are taking six APDs. Story is much okay. different for us. All right. So what's your next question? Do you want us to print out the assignment sheet? Uh, if you can, great. I'll have a, or I, I was just going to put it on the overhead with the list of assignments on it. Did you guys not, you guys don't have one um, in the first place? Oh, okay. Well, hold on. Oh, yeah. Mr. Ryan? Yeah. 
Um, I still need to turn in my uh, assignments up from last unit. Yes, you do. Oh my god. Don't you have it for the last two units? Oh my god. No, no, just the last. Oh, just the last unit? Okay. I don't know. And I think, hey, uh, Shannon, is you? did you say Brandon was there? Yeah. He's another one. He hasn't he hasn't finished the polyatomic ion quiz from the beginning of the year. So if he doesn't, I mean, if that's like I should be putting him in plus with a no mark for that, and he still owes me a packet or two as well. Brandon, you need to get your life together. Okay. All right. Uh, other other questions. Um, I have one just really quick. I'll yes. Stuff I should know for the AP test. Yes. Um, you don't have to memorize it for this test, but those are things that you need to start learning. Okay. The, and the, here's the thing: that list of strong oxidizers and reducers. The point there was to memorize it for the net ionic equation question that they threw out. So they're trying very hard to move away. Like all of this changes with College Board somewhat mirrors the changes in Common Core, and everyone's moving away from memorizing. They don't want you to have to memorize stuff. They want you to have the critical thinking skills. So, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna look, but don't, don't spend a lot of time memorizing that list. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. What? Other questions? Can we jump off the list? Um, as long as it's over a large body of water. <laughs> Wouldn't you still die if the height was large enough? Um, I don't know if we have any of those nearby, but yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> you guys are losing it. Hey, hey guys, I'm not evil. I'm not evil. I'm not doing this on purpose, really. I am a good guy, and I'm looking out for you. Good guy, weren't you? <laughs> okay. I love these little effects. Okay. So do you, if there aren't any more questions, you should be... Nick, stop it. Um, you guys should say a little bit more, and then um, you guys will should go to bed and get a good night's rest. What's not a good sign? Getting sleep? Well, if we're done, you guys should study just a little bit more. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm saying that like we've gone over this and maybe there's a little bit more that you guys could talk about. It always helps to like have a wrap up after a review session. Let's wrap it up, Nick. Wrap it up. When you have two more tests tomorrow. <laughs> know, right? You can do that too. I only have one test, so. Good That's for good. You. Okay, so how about this? <laughs> So the next test, you guys have to remember this. You guys have to remember that I want to have my test on a different day than Calc and U.S. History. And so the next time I go to take a test, you guys need to say something. Or set up. What? No, I'm not. It's too late. I already postponed it from, I was going to try to do it during homecoming week. And then we postponed it. Okay, Priscilla. Mr. Wynn? Yes. So I was talking to Maddie Lip here at Origin. Yes. I think like the hardest part about AP Chem was like not like you know how to do things, but you just don't know what the question's asking. Or I definitely feel that for like most of the units so far. It's so, like maybe for, like the next unit can we focus on like like defining all like what the question's asking as well as like knowing how to do it. Sure. So, like, Focusing on like the question part of it because I don't know I feel really confused when it comes to that I feel like a lot of other people okay we can we can spend some time on that absolutely well we'll okay. are you guys are at Origins right now yeah we're in the back room I don't think we're supposed to be back here but oh. No, that's fine. I thought, man, you guys are probably really loud, and it's usually not that loud in the main area. So, no, okay, that's yes. The next time we do this, I'll um, I will we'll talk more about how to identify what the question is asking for. Yes, yeah, this this old lady at Origin was talking to me about my future today, and she made me really stressed out. Can we just no. take a moment to realize Katie's also with us? Oh, hi, Katie. I didn't know you were there. I'm from you. 
Because well, this is good. We wanted to see if you would talk about her behind her back. No, no, no. All right. All right. So, are there no more questions about the test? Okay. I will be at school between six fifteen and six thirty. Study. Yes, you can come in and study, you can come in and ask me questions, you can whatever. Is it a problem if we don't like, if we just give up right now? Yes, it is a problem. <laughs> you must you must have perseverance. Okay, hey, I didn't tell you guys this, I got an email from Brian Rainey, or did I tell you that already? You can't have that. Oh. I'm telling you, like it's, it's getting through this, just getting through it is going to be so valuable. Can you take the halo off your head? Because it's really hard to like... Take, take me face. seriously? I just don't want you guys to... I don't want you to hate me, Nick. Do you hate me, Nick? No. You keep asking me that. Oh, do you like this? This is my... See, it says chill. Yeah. Yeah, yes. It's my favorite, like, dress down shirt. Sweatshirt. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Peace out. Woo. This is how we do it. All right. And there's a reason that a lot of us are having trouble. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about? You're not having problems. You got this. All right. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. <laughs> Bye. Bye, good night.